Hi folks, Craig Dewar here. Thanks for that great introduction. So let's get into today's presentation, which is all about Alteryx Iterative Macros. So we're going to aim to get you in and out within the next 30 minutes. And before we start, we're just going to let you know we're assuming that you already know a little bit about Alteryx and that you know what a macro is, for instance. And this session is really aimed at folks who may be uh, new to macros and want to push themselves up to the next level and get into that world of iterative macros. So hopefully at the end of this session, you'll have some confidence to go and give one out a try yourself. So what we're covering is we're going to briefly cover what is an Alteryx iterative macro. And then we're going to run you through my six pro tips that will get you off and racing into the world of iterative macros. And we're going to uh, give you a demo actually put, taking you through those six pro tips in, with a live scenario. We're going to keep it pretty simple to get within our time frame today. So let's get on with it. So what is uh, a macro and what is an iterative macro? So you'll remember that a macro in Alteryx is a workflow of processes that can be built into another workflow. So it's a repeatable set of steps that can be packaged up into uh, one tool. And when Alteryx first sets up a macro, you'll see that they'll be standard or batch. Now they run a certain number of set times. An iterative macro, however, lets you run an X or unknown number of times that macro. So what you do is you need to set it up to repeat. This is a bit like a coding logic, repeat until, and then you need to set up some sort of end condition. And we'll take you through how to do that in just a minute. The big thing about an Alteryx iterative macro though, in my mind, is the fact that you can push data through an input and then back out an output and then back in through the next iteration. So in this case here, we're pushing data in here, we're processing the formula, we're filtering it out, we're sending it to an output tool, and a new data set comes in to be reprocessed, and so on, and so on, until you hit an in condition where maybe it becomes true and you output one set of values. Does that all make sense? All right, well, let's start going through some pro tips so pro tip number one is how do you set up Alteryx to know that you want it to be an iterative macro? Well, that's nice and easy. Uh, you go into the workflow configuration uh, and click on your workflow tab here. And once you set up your uh, workflow to be a macro, it'll default to standard. And to change it to an iterative, it's just a simple drop down choice here to change that to an iterative. And just a reminder, we are going to show you all of these in our live demo in just a moment. So that's your first tip. Pretty simple, eh? So second tip is all about labeling your output. So when you have a macro output here, I'm going to give you the tip to change that to a label, say the word result. And if you have, an, you have another output there, change that to be the word iterate. This becomes really important when you then are setting up your macro so that Alteryx knows which one of these to iterate back around to. So in this case here, we've, we've got the uh, interface designer properties tab. We've got this drop down here, which allows you to set your iteration output. In this case, we've selected iterate rather than the result. Does that make sense? Cool. All right, that's your second tip. So your third tip that I've got for you is all about what goes in must come out again. So your input columns and output columns of your iterative output must be the same. So in this case, we've got five columns that are coming in. We're processing the data. And before we send it out to go around again, we have to get rid of some of these extra columns that we've been using to do our calculations in our process. Does that make sense? Cool, so that's pro tip number three. What about pro tip four? And that is uh, all about your approach. So you're much better off processing the raw data without thinking too hard about your next iteration. So in this case, we've processed our data. I'm going to encourage you to get it ready and prepare it for the final output and branch off another stream and then start thinking about all of the things you need to do with the data and, and uh, deselecting columns and so on before you go back out to the uh, next iteration. That's a tip where you really have to start creating some of your own macros to really know what I'm talking about. So let's move on to tip number five. 
Tip number five is about you deciding how you're going to end your iterations. There's two ways to do that. When you're developing your macro, you'll, you'll have this little um, box here I'll show you in just a minute how to get to it. And you can decide how many maximum number of iterations. I encourage you to wind that back down to like five or 10 iterations while you're testing and to also change it to a warning rather than an error message. That'll give you a little less grief when you're running it with big noisy exclamation marks coming up on your screen. But when you're ready to run it for real, you need to set up that end condition. So this is an end condition again with a filter. So we're gonna have 25 rows of data coming through this filter and onwards to the next iteration if this condition is true. And once this condition becomes false, nothing goes out the true end and therefore the iterations stop. So you might recognize this one from an Alteryx challenge. I think it's number 123 if you wanna try it a bit later. On this one here is calculating the number of rabbits. And once they get to more than twice the human population of the USA, then we know how many iterations we've hit and we've answered our question and we can finish output our result. So that's pro tip number six. On to the last tip. And this is making use of your engine iteration numbers. This is a, a constant that Alteryx allows you to tap into for iterative macros. It keeps track of every iteration on iteration numbers. It starts at zero though. So if you want to make really good use of it, I'd recommend you create an iteration calculation. Grab this from your set of constants and just add one to it. Cool, all right, so that's six quick tips. Let's go and have a look at them in action within a demo. So the problem that we're going to use for our demo here today is a prime number challenge. So we know our prime numbers, first five prime numbers are two, three, five, seven, and 11. And what we've been asked to solve today is what is the 100th prime number? So I'm gonna go and use Alteryx and an iterative approach to work that out. And just a reminder that if you have any questions during the demo, make sure you add them into the chat window and we'll have our moderator collect those questions and we'll have some time to answer them at the end of the presentation. So let's go and have a look at Alteryx.